This is Grassland Studios and welcome to our introduction to perspective drawing series. Before we begin the actual uh, videos for perspective drawing, I want to talk about uh, a diagram which really explains the fundamentals behind perspective drawing and why it works uh, on a human basis level. It's a diagram that I was taught in the beginning of, of art school and a lot of perspective videos don't really talk about this. Um, and I think it's just very helpful to know from the beginning why perspective drawing works and what we're really looking at in, in real life, um, how we see perspective. The drawing that you see before you is just a basic layout uh, for, a, for a drawing that I have that's a work in progress. I'm putting it up just so that you can see that it, lo it may look complicated in the beginning, uh, but it's actually really simple. And so I made this entire drawing just based off of some simple rules uh, and tr tips and tricks I'm gonna be teaching in this series. And you're gonna be able to make layouts uh, when you're trying to sketch. They're gonna look just like this and I'm gonna show you how you're gonna be able to do that. So let's go ahead and start with the first diagram. So when we think about perspective drawing, um, it really comes down to how we see perspective as human beings. And so it's very important that we actually take a moment to just think about how perspective works. And I feel like a lot of young artists when they start off just want to go ahead and draw. They just, how do I lay out the vanishing points for one point, two point, and three point? How do I put you know the center of vision and the measuring points? I just want to start drawing. I was the exact same way. But when I first started learning perspective properly, I was shown this diagram and it really helped me. It just sort of clicked and I understood why perspective worked. And it really helped me with my drawings and uh, just to make sure that I always am staying within the guidelines, uh, but making sure that it works for that my drawings, my drawings can become better. So I hope that this makes more sense after you've seen this. So let's take a look at this person that we see right here. Imagine that you are the viewer. Everything is dependent upon the viewer, which is why the viewer is an independent variable. Now imagine that you as a viewer are standing on this three-dimensional space. There's one plane, this rectangular plane that you're standing on, and this other plane, which is we know as the picture plane. You may have heard this term used before. We're going to explain it real quickly in just a little bit here. So everything is dependent upon the viewer. Now you may have seen drawings uh, that use perspective, which look sort of warped. Um, and you may be trying to look at them and saying, something looks wrong, but I don't really know what's wrong. Well, it probably has to do with the cone of vision. This black circle that you see right here is the cone of vision's area. And so human beings, we have about a 53 degree cone of vision. But for drawing, because 53 degrees isn't an even number and we need a little bit of a larger area, we have this rule of thumb where we've agreed upon 60 degrees to be the cone of vision. So it's a little bit larger than the actual cone of vision that we have, but it's okay because things don't look too warped. So let's go ahead and lay this out. So from these, these blue lines, imagine that if you intersect it, there's 30 degrees and 30 degrees. And this black line that we have right here, if you are looking straight ahead, is going to be your center of vision. This line that we have going across on the center of vision, everything takes place for our guidelines on the eye level. And the eye level is where we're looking at. And so the eye level is one of the most important parts because we can use the eye level to create reference points, to create additional vanishing points, uh, to measure things off within the distance. And so it's very, very important. Now, if we were looking at a three-dimensional space, there's this triangle, this black line, which then connects the center vision, which then goes straight down to right here and goes back to the eye of the viewer, this triangle, which everything's contained. Now this point right here is going to be our station point. The station point can be uh, very large, can be very small. Uh, when we're talking about this, this line that connects the station point, um, you can have a larger drawing to give you a smaller area. And so we can expand or contract this actual size. Um, but what's important about the station point is that it connects the vanishing points. And so if we look within this blue circle right here, this would be vanishing point one, and this would be vanishing point two. 
for example, if we were using two-point perspective. Now, for one-point perspective, two-point perspective, three-point perspective, we always have a cone of vision, uh, and we're going to have our station points, and that's how it's laid out. But what's important about this is this one thing, which is that if we were to draw connected within the angles, like in geometry, this is a right angle. And so on both sides, we have 45 degrees here and 45 degrees here. And this is very important because at the station point right here, I'm going to show you how later on you can actually tilt the station point to give you additional vanishing points. Now, it might sound a little bit odd at first, but it is very helpful for being able to draw in new ways for diagonal lines um, on the ground and diagonal lines to create new structures and new buildings while still maintaining the correct perspective. So you have this 60 degrees, which is going to be for your cone of vision, and the 45 degrees, which is going to be for your vanishing points. Now, notice how the cone of vision uh, this black circle right here, we call it the, the cone of vision. Notice how the cone of vision is actually smaller in the vanishing points. Well, that's because just as the 30 degrees from the point of the viewer is going right here, the same thing is true for here. These black lines, if we were to connect them across the center of vision, would equal to 30 degrees and 30 degrees. And so that's why when we have a drawing, if we just measure 30 degrees in both, uh, in both directions, we can get our cone of vision and draw that with a compass, just simply right around from those points at which they interconnect. Uh, they connect here and here. So that's going to be what you're really lo looking at, and that's how it works in a three-dimensional point of view. It is going to be just like that. And so what we're looking at in, in all angles for these drawings are just the human aspect of how we, we look at a drawing. How to make sure that when we're drawing, we're maintaining the center, uh, the, the cone of vision, that everything's staying within that. Um, do, we have the, do we have everything laid out correctly so that we can then tilt them? Another thing that I want to add right here, which is what a lot of people forget, are measuring points. Measuring points are very, very important for measuring dimensions properly within the drawing. So if you had a compass and you place on one point right here from the vanishing point and you grab this red line and we swung it up with a compass, you would get a left, uh, a right measuring point on this side. Remember that whenever we are putting measuring points, they're the opposite. So on the left side is the actual right measuring point and on the right side is the left measuring point. If we did the same thing with a compass and sort of pulled it up here, we went straight up, we would get a left measuring point at about right there. And so I'll show you how to properly calculate these, but the general rule of thumb, which is uh, important to remember, is that um, the measuring point is the same distance to uh, the vanishing point as the station point is from the vanishing point. And so you can say it many different ways, and that sounds like a mouthful, but really all that we're saying is, this distance from the vanishing point to the measuring, its corresponding measuring point, is the same distance as uh, the vanishing point to the station point. So that's, on a human basis, how perspective drawing actually works. I hope that that really helped you to sort of be able to sort of uh, think about your drawings in a new way and to understand some of the concepts a little bit better. In the next videos, we're going to go ahead and start with some actual uh, tips and tricks for perspective, perspective drawing. I'll see you then.